Greetings, gentle members of the Music, Gender, and Sexuality graduate class at CFA's School of Music. Some of you in the Department of Musicology and Ethnomusicology are already aware of the hashtag Scholar Strike campaign. Our department chair, Michael Birnbaum Quintero, distributed an article from Inside Higher Ed in which a call for collective action by academics was made to occur on September 8th and 9th in favor of racial justice and inspired by the WNBA and NBA walkouts. Rather than stage such a physical walkout during my Wednesday class, I instead closed down my physical lecture in order to slow down, to take the time to enact, well, what Michael terms a micro strike during which time I will reflect on the opening of my own understanding of politics and the politics of labor, specifically within musical traditions, we as ethnomusicologists are privileged to study and work. Relating music and more specifically musicians to the themes of hashtag scholar strike, police violence, racialized violence, racism, white supremacy is quite easy, especially if we consider the real world scenarios that form and inform many of our field research experiences. Many of us were trained to mask anything gritty, anything that revealed too much of the underbelly of the lives and cultural traditions within which music blossoms, emerges, develops. And to be fair, for generations of scholars, this underbelly was all but inaccessible. How many of us have found ourselves adopting unknowingly a snowball approach to working with interlocutors? So-and-so leads us to work with so-and-so based on their work with a former colleague, a former teacher, a former ethnomusicologist, they, whoever they may be, knows what we want to know and they know how to teach us. And for many of us, we have been purposefully protected by the very people we should be protecting. But this is a bit vague, isn't it? Today, I need to unmask myself um, and some of the musical traditions within which I work a bit. Unmasking is a timely metaphor in the era of COVID. And I do not use the term lightly, but rather intentionally for unmasking has always already been a dangerous and sometimes threatening act. I recently published a co-edited volume titled Queering the Field, Sounding Out Ethnomusicology, that ethnomusicology needed and still needs to be sounded out is a strong statement. There are many traditions, musicians, cultures, and yes, ethnomusicologists within this volume that are revealed to live within a variety of precarious, dangerous, and frequently violent situations. The lives of ethnomusicologists who study queer performative traditions are just as often conflated with the powers that are attached to the violence of theological, cultural, and political reactions to the performance of queer identity. I remember first reading of the physical violence experienced by my academic colleagues in the field. I remember being surprised to learn of the emotional violence experienced by others in the course of their field research. And then I also remember the shame of being opened, allowing myself to open up to the seedy, dangerous and violent underbelly of queer performance traditions that on the surface rely on our ability to perceive glamour and beauty. I recall at times in my early work with drag queens and an inability to reconcile the projection of image and identity. 
within the purposeful construction of a context focused on beauty, only to be reminded the following morning of the precarity of queer beauty, especially when visiting a drag performer, a musician, after they had been attacked, brutally attacked, or helping somebody figure out the logistics of the legal system as they found themselves arrested for walking while queer. If academic studies of queer music traditions allow us anything, it is to approach with empathy the queer musicians who surround us in our communities and to reach out to them with the very tools we have at our disposal, specifically our hearts and our ethnographies. Again, the hashtag scholar strike campaign asked the privileged scholars in universities to withhold their pedagogical and administrative labor in solidarity. Rather than withhold my labor from BU and from my students, today I rather demonstrate solidarity in order to reveal the very fact that I have labor to withhold in worlds where the people with whom I am privileged to work often do not. Thank you.